Hello, Tonu. This is uh, your tutor for the day, Jeffrey Matthews. And um, I will be using this video to answer one of your questions that you mailed me through Skype. Your question states that there are three charges, Q1, Q2, Q3, each equal to Q at the vertices of an equilateral triangle of side L. What is the force on a charge Q at this center? Right? So, first of all, let's get the diagram right. When the diagram is not very complicated, it's an equilateral triangle. So the three sides are the same. This is not a good diagram, doesn't matter. This is L, L, L. So this is my triangle A, B, C. I hope you can see that. Now, we have charges Q, Q, and Q, respectively, at the three vertices, right? And now we have a central Q right here. And we want to find the net force on that charge Q, which is at the centroid of this triangle. Now, some properties that we want to know for an equilateral triangle, and what is an equilateral triangle? A triangle whose lengths, whose sides have the same length. In this case, we call it L, it can be four, whatever, you know, any number, any, they all have to be the same. In such, in such a case, the centroid, which is somewhere over here, the centroid, the distance from the centroid is going to be, so this height is going to be two-thirds of the total height, h. And what is h? h is the total height. So this is a property of uh, the centroid of, a, of an equilateral triangle. So whenever they say equilateral triangle, we should know that this distance from the vertice, from one of the vertices to the centroid O is two thirds of the total height. I hope that makes sense. Once we know that, now we need to find the three forces. So what is the equation for electrostatic force? Force equals K Q1 Q2 over R squared. Now, K is also written as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 over R squared. Now, in you, usually most questions, Q1 and Q2 are not complicated to find. What is Q1? Q1 is the first charge. Q2 is the second charge. This is a constant, so that's nothing we have to deal with over there. So really, the trick is to find the distance. So what are we trying to find here? We're trying to find the force by this charge Q on this charge, then the force by this guy on this guy, then the char force by this guy on this guy. So for that in your solution, there are multiple ways of solving this, but your solution has done it this way. They have drawn an, uh, a bisector, right? not a bisector, but um, perpendicular to the side a b c, and they call this a d. Right? So AD is your perpendicular. So first of all, if I take the triangle, just this small triangle, I call it 1. In a equilateral triangle, all angles are 60 degrees. So this would be 6, this is 60, this is 60, this is 60. So this would be 90, so this would be 30. This is, this side is called AC. This is AD. So what is AD? If I take cosine 30 degrees, cosine 30, I'll get adjacent. What is adjacent? Adjacent is AD over hypot, which is AC. Hypot is a side opposite 90, so AC is, sorry, AD, AD is AC times cosine 30. Okay. So what is AC? AC though is one of the sides of the triangle, so it's going to be L times cosine 30 is root 3 over 2. I hope that's clear. I usually use a marker, but I, uh, I need to get a new one. And I was thinking I'll use the pen. If that's not clear, I'll have to write bigger. 
So AD is AC cosine 30, which is AC times root 3 over 2. So this is AD, but what are we looking for? We're trying to find R. What is R? R is the distance from the centroid to each of the vertices. So in this case, what is R? R is this height over here. R is the distance from the cent from the Q, which is over here, to the charge over here. So what's that going to be? Two thirds of this. So R is going to be two thirds of A D, which is the height. So that'll be two thirds of A C. What is A A C root three over two? I just put this in there which is 2 third times L times root 3 over 2. 2 and 2 cancel, so I get root 3 over 3L. Three root 3 over 3L three is my R. Now by symmetry, this AO, which we found out to be R, is will be the same as BO, which will be the same as CO, the respective distances of each of these charges to the central charge. So really the question is, if you, if you were the charge right in the center, how much force would you experience from the three? So this is pushing you down, this is pushing you to the right, this is pushing you to the left. So we need the distances, we found all the distances to be this. So now we just plug it in. So what is F1 going to be? F1 is going to be from here. F1 will be... 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q uppercase q r squared what is r r is root 3 over 3 l squared so what does that mean that's going to be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q times q root 3 over 3 l squared is what that's going to be 1 over root 3 squared is 3, 3 squared is 9 over L squared. So I can take this 9 on top, so it will be 9 over 3, which is, this is 3, this goes on top, so I will get 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q, Q over L squared. This 3 flips to the top, so it becomes times 3. That's how they got the 3. I hope I didn't confuse you. I mean, that was basically your question, but to get there, I just explained the whole procedure. If this is not clear, let me know, and I'll, uh, I'll get myself a marker and re-record this. Much love, Molu. I hope that helped. Let me know if you have any further questions, and I can work it out the same way. Please leave any questions under the YouTube video if you want it answered, and I'll get back to you as soon as I wake up or as soon as I see it. Love you, Molu. Take care. Bye-bye.